Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. This week I have five super useful Google Chrome extensions and websites for all types of language learners. All of these are free and can be used on both Mac and Windows laptops. Zhongwen is a pop-up Chinese dictionary that gently reminds you of the various keyboard shortcuts when turned on. Whether you're learning online or reading the news, such as this article from China Youth Daily, you can either hover over or use N or M to translate the words you don't know. What's more is that there's a built-in word list that you can add to and access by using Alt W, which shows you your translation history. As well as deleting and saving rows, you can also download word lists, which isn't in the prettiest form, but still very useful to create notes with. Next, we have language learning with Netflix and YouTube. Our dream to watch our favourite international YouTubers with dual subtitles has finally come true. With this extension, you can view the entire video subtitles in this sidebar and jump to any sentence in the video you wish to hear. You can translate words by instantly hovering over them and save them to your word list so that you can view them or even edit them later. In the settings, you can change the language to match with the videos, alter the font size for your target and mother language, and change the colour. Of course, this setting didn't work out at all. It took me a while to get used to the settings, but I wanted to let you guys know there is a daily cap to saving words, and some music videos did not work the best as I couldn't put dual subs, and the translations became very literal. On a brighter note, I think this extension works so much better with Netflix. The settings are almost identical, where one difference is changing the opacity of the subtitles, plus changing the colour is so useful as you can tune it to the type of movie that you're watching. Of course, you can hover over for the translation, but I've already reached the word saving limit, so they don't show on the words tab to review later, but they do show up when I download the saved words as a text file. Next, Readlang is like Zhongwen, but a little more advanced, which translates to and from more than 50 languages. Whether you're learning Japanese grammar from Marugoto or reading any native content, you can use Readlang to translate both words and phrases you don't know. These are the extension settings where you can manage your preferences, and then you can hover over and highlight anything that may confuse you while learning or reading. Please note that the free version only lets you translate 10 phrases per day. However, when you encounter words you don't know, you can even save them into your personal word list which turns them into flashcards later on. If you're not sure what to read, there are articles for all levels built into the extension so that you never get bored. Plus, all of your translation history is saved in order and by website. For these reasons, Readlang is my absolute favourite. Please do note that to open the link you would have to close the extension, but other than that, the user experience is great. So hiragana.jp is actually a website, but for my Japanese learners out there who want to read anything in Japanese but find it difficult to read kanji, this is definitely for you. Your Miyodi news is still quite difficult for me, so all I have to do is copy and paste the link into the hiragana search bar and the page will be automatically converted to one which includes Furigana. What's more is you can even use Readlang, my new favourite extension, to find out the meaning of the words if the Furigana isn't enough. As you can see, both the extension slash websites don't clash with each other, which is a plus, but some areas of the web page may be affected and show this error message when you try to open the link. Lastly, I do try to avoid Google Translate, but Google Input Tools is actually really useful if you want to be able to type in your target language. This is especially apparent if your laptop does not have this built in. You can draw as well as type words and sentences from more than 80 languages. I was very happy with this little trial run until I tried to use kanji and katakana. 
Honestly, I think you guys will figure it out quicker than me, but when I tried to take grammar notes from Marugoto that I used with Readlang previously, I thought that the system would recognise that kanji needed to be applied just like with any other keyboard. Nevertheless, this is one out of many languages and it works perfectly in simplified Chinese and Korean. Thank you so much for watching friends, I hope you enjoyed my very honest opinions this week. Look out for my weekly study routine this month and my brand new channel video coming out tomorrow. Have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video.